So let's learn about loops and conditionals. We're going to start work on this notebook, 04 loops and conditionals. We learned how to create lists and dictionaries. Let's say how we can kind of iterate over each item and do some processing. This is why a lot of you are learning Python because you want to now do automation. I have 100 things to process. I know how to process these things. Can I write a loop? Can I just process all of 100 things without me manually doing everything? So in Python, you can use loops. The most common way to write a loop is using this for loop. So let's say we have this list cities equals this four items. We can write a for loop. The syntax goes like this for something in cities colon do something. Okay. So this is the kind of general syntax where you say for something in cities do something. Now you can use any variable here. So you can say for X in cities, do something. And what this will do is it'll take each item from the cities list, assign it to this variable X here, and then you have access to this variable and you can do things. So I can say for X in cities, print X. And this will print all four things. This could be anything. I can just say for city in cities, print city. It just means that whatever each item of the list will be assigned to a variable called city, and then it will be printed next. It is very important in Python to indent your code correctly. So you can see by after fall, when I did this colon, I had to indent my code. If I write my code like this, I'll get an error. It says indentation error. It says after every for loop, you need to indent your code to tell Python what is inside the loop and what is outside. So into indent your code. If I have a code like this, what do you think will happen? It says for city in city, print city, indented, and then unindented, print city. What do you think will be the output here? So this works, right? We know that this works, but now what if I had this print city outside indentation? Let me run this. It print Atlanta twice. Why did this happen? Well, the loop finished. It iterated through all the items in the city. The last variable value that was assigned to this variable city was Atlanta. You come out of the loop and say, my for loop is over. What next? And you say, okay, print city. And the last value in the city was city. And that's the reason it prints Atlanta twice. So indentation, if you do not use it correctly, it can result in a lot of bugs in your code. Let's see what happens with this. What do you think will happen now? I have two prints inside of the indentation block. The correct answer is since both of these prints are inside the indented block, they'll be executed twice. So you'll get two prints because it's a for city and cities, print city, print city, and then both of them are in the loop. So your indentation will determine what is inside the loop and what is outside the loop. So make sure you have the correct indentation. The indentation can be a tab or a space, but they have to be at the same level. What do you think will happen now? I have the first statement indented with one tab, second statement indented with two tabs. I bet every one of you will encounter this error in the next six months. Unexpected indent. What Python is saying that I know, I understand the first indent. What is second indent doing? I don't know. There's no loop inside. Why did you indent this? If it's a single loop, everything has to be the same indent level or no indent at all. You can't just randomly indent things. This error is most common if you end up using space for uh, indentation. Sometimes you can do two spaces for this. And you can say two spaces for this. This works. But now, if, by mistake, you have a three space, you have an indentation. So tabs are usually better because it's easy to just maintain your indentation instead of you know, you're forgetting to press your space bar one more time. So I prefer tabs, but either of this is fine. So make sure you have the indentation correctly. This is a tricky topic in Python. In Python, they decide to have this indented block determining what's inside and outside the loop. This for it's because it's cleaner, but it results in some of this unexpected bug if you don't understand it correctly. Okay, so this is one way to do your for loop. 
you can iterate over any other things that contain many things. So we have a dictionary. So I have a, this dictionary and I want to iterate over it. So I have these three things in the dictionary. One way to iterate is I can say for X in data dot items. So when you call this function items, it'll give you the key and value pairs. So you can see I have this thing. When I say data dot items, I'll get tuple. The first item is key, second is the value. And I get three items and I can iterate over all of this. So I can do things like this. You can say for X in data items, I'll say key is X of zero, value is X of one. And I can say, you know, let's do string. We'll say the key is dash and the value is dash. And we format it and say key and value. Yes, if you wanted to print nice way, you can create a statement like this. So it'll iterate the data items will give you a tuple containing key and value, extract the first item and store it in the variable key, second item in value, and you can create a string like this. Since when you iterate your dictionary, you will have to work with keys and values. You can do this directly. So it, what's happening here is this X is a tuple and you are saying take the first value in key, second value in value. So instead of doing this, you can do it directly like this. For key value in data dot items, do this. This works. This is called a direct assignment where you can say I have taken the tuple, unpacked it into two values, key and value, and assigned it directly. You'll see a lot of code like this when you read. They'll say for k b in data dot items, print k and b. So if you just want to iterate over keys and values, you can do like this. It's just saying that the k variable will get the first item from each tuple, v value, v variable will get the second item. You can do this. We'll pause here and see the questions on iterating over dictionaries. And to reiterate, this could be anything, right? You can just have any two values and those will be used as variables. So, you know, sometimes people use KV, but you don't need to use that. You can use any values. Here we had some lists or dictionaries to iterate over. What if you just want to do something 10 times? I don't have a list, but I want to run a for loop for 10 times or 100 times. You can use this function called range to do some work for multiple times. So range will generate a list of values for a certain amount. So you can say for X in range five, print X. And you can see this prints number from zero to four. Again, range works the same way, counting starts from zero and you can use this. You can also do things like this, range one to 10. It'll print range starting at one, stopping going up to 10 and printing those values. So if I wanted to print one to 100, I can do one two hundred and one, and it'll print one two hundred. The same concept applies that we saw earlier. We can say one ten two. It'll print every alternate number. Okay, so this is useful in generating list of numbers or doing something. You know, I say I want to try this hundred times. People will do this for x in range hundred. Do this, and they will try this the loop hundred times. Okay, for loops, we learned the most important thing about for loops is make sure your indentation is correct. The indentation will determine what is inside and what is outside the loop. And you can iterate over a list just by a for loop. If you want to iterate over a dictionary called data.items, dictionary.items, and you can iterate over the tuple of key and values. Next topic we want to learn is when we are iterating over stuff, Python will just go and iterate over everything. What if you want to apply some condition and check and apply some conditions and stop the loop or do something else? So learn about conditions using the if statement. The if statement syntax is very similar. So the if statement says if whatever the condition, colon, and then you have an indented block to say what happens if the if condition is true. So here, whatever you want to write, it says if condition to do this, and whatever is in the indented block will work. 
So here we have a condition, if city equals equals Atlanta, print city. I want to get you, show you the list here. So this is our list. And we have this code. What do you think it will print? For city in cities, if city equals equals Atlanta, print city. What do you think will be the output? The correct answer is it will only print Atlanta, right? Because only when this condition is matched, it will come in the indented block and print that. We can have an else condition. So if the if condition is not met, we can define an else condition. So what happens if we do not find that? The key one, what do you think will happen now? For city in cities, if city is equal to Atlanta, print city, indented block, unindent, print city. So what happens here is this condition will match only for Atlanta, it will be printed. Once this block is over, the if condition doesn't apply anymore. So it, then this rest of the statements are still part of the for loop. So now it'll say San Francisco, I will not even go inside this indented block. I'll print city, I'll print area city, Atlanta will be printed twice. And that's what the indented block for the statement is doing. When you're writing conditions, one of the bugs that you'll encounter is things like this. You'll say for city and cities, if city equals to Atlanta, print city. And you'll get an error saying that, oh, you're just assigning the value Atlanta to city. You're not checking the value of Atlanta against this. So double equal to is a comparison operator. Single equal to is an assignment operator. So make sure when you are writing if conditions, always use double equal to. So you have a condition, not just an assignment. You can have multiple if statements. So we, let's say we have a dictionary like this. We have cities and their respective populations. And we want to print statements like this. If the population is less than a million, we say this is a small city. And if, that is, we have one more condition. So else if population is greater than a million, less than 5 million, this is a big city. Else, if none of these conditions match, we print it's a mega city. So when you run this, it'll go through the loop and say if the first condition matched, it will not even evaluate the other conditions. It just print that and go to the next item. If you have two conditions, the second condition has to be elif, else if, and else will be catch all. Whatever didn't match in any of those will be printed here. Yes, this is how you can kind of write multiple conditions. You are iterating through the loop. Sometimes you want to stop the loop. An example is I'm trying to find an item and say, I have a file with a million items and I'm trying to find a particular item in this file. I'm iterating through each line and I found the item at the hundredth line. Should I keep going and checking till the millionth line? I don't want to continue my loop. I don't want to waste my computation resources. I want to stop the loop. So that's where we'll learn about some control statements. One of the control statements is break, the most commonly used one, where you're iterating over the list. By default, it'll iterate through all the items. And if you want to stop it, if it says, if city equals to New York, break. So it'll continue validating whenever it encounters this statement and says this condition is true, it'll break. So it'll work and once the new arc is printed, it will break, it will stop the loop. What about now? What will happen? For city in cities, print city, break. The loop will stop as soon as it encounters a break statement. So this loop is continuing, it print the city, and once a break encounters, loop stops, it comes out of the loop. The rest of the loop doesn't even get executed. Let's do for x in range 10, print x. And if x greater than 5, break. Yep. Simple enough. We are iterating through numbers 0 to 9. Printing x, if x is greater than 5, it breaks it. Now we will learn about the next statement, which one is a little confusing. The next statement is called continue. Let's do this. So we are iterating towards this numbers from 0 to 10. We have the statement, if x greater than 5, continue, and then we have print x. What continue says is, as soon as we encounter a continue, do not do anything else in the loop. So whatever you've been doing in the loop, finish that, go to the next item of the loop. Do not do any statement that follows continue. 
So when you have continue, none of the statement that comes after it will be executed. So in this case, when I run this, say 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, as soon as it's greater than 5, this statement won't get printed because continue will just move on to the next item. Continue is often used where you say, if I have encountered a null value, continue. Because I have a code which doesn't expect null values. So if I encounter a null value, continue. Don't, don't move for the processing of that. Go to the next item. So a list of things, continue, will reject the remaining statements in the current indented block, move on to the next item. So continue is sometimes used to handle null values or unexpected values in there. Not very widely used, but sometimes if you encounter, you know, and continue will simply reject remaining statements. So, so I will say print first statement and I'll do this second statement. So you can say zero, first and second, one, first and second. As soon as this condition is met, x greater than five, you'll say first statement, so for six, say so first statement, second statement doesn't get printed because it moves on to the next item. So in cut or continue, I will not go further down in the indented block. I'll go to the next item. So from six onwards, you don't have second statements. Okay, so it'll just reject the remaining statements, go to the next iteration of that. And lastly, we have a statement for say, do nothing. I want to have a statement like this. It said, for x in the instant, don't do anything. Just iterate. It said, no, no. For loop says, you have to write something. You can't just leave it blank. That's a syntax. So if you just want to do nothing, the statement is pass. For x in the instant, just do pass. Do nothing. Pass is useful as a placeholder. Sometimes when you're writing your code, you say, I'll fill this later on. So you say, I'm doing this. I don't know what to do yet. I'll just, but I want my code to work. So I'll just use pass. Sometimes you can just say things like this, print x, if x is some, whatever, five, I'll deal with this later on. I don't know what to do. My code will work. This doesn't do anything. And right? pass is just a null statement. But if I left it out, I have to say, you have to do something here. I don't know what to do yet. So I'll just put pass now, and I'll fill this on later on. So mostly it's used as a placeholder. So we learned about, Quite a few things we learned about for loops. You would write for loop. Second, we learned about conditions, if and else conditions. Thirdly, we learned about control statements, break, continue, and pass. Break is the most commonly used one. And as soon as we encounter a break statement, it'll stop. Continue will reject the remaining statements in the indented block, move to the next item. And pass is simply a null statement. Yeah, let's do the exercise.